Mourners are gathering outside of the Immaculate Conception Church in Astoria, Queens, as the hearse for NYPD detective Lou Alvarez arrives for his funeral. Family and friends there are now gathering to welcome his casket outside the church to say their final goodbyes, as well as first responders who are lining the streets as well. We are live there, ending, bringing you everything as far as the funeral is concerned. Chopper 2 was over the scene as the hearse left Long Island, traveling into Queens on the Southern State Parkway. It was a very emotional scene as we saw on overpasses some of the flags where they're flying, first responders saluting their brother. You may remember that Alvarez made national headlines. This was just about three weeks ago before his death when he testified before Congress, urging them to indefinitely fund the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. Right by his side at that time was John Stewart. And we actually saw John Stewart arrive here at the funeral today. Our Maurice Dubois joined Alvarez from his hospice room when he explained just how important it was for him to fight until the very end to bring a voice to all of those who sacrificed so much on that day. Again, we have been watching here as mourners, hundreds, gather the street in front of Immaculate Conception Church in Astoria, Queens, where this mass will be head to held today. Alvarez, just 53 years old, he leaves behind a wife and three sons as well. It looks as though maybe some family and friends are exiting as you see the first responders here uh, bring out his casket, which I assume will be draped in a flag as he also served in the Marine Corps as well. And this funeral will also be attended by Commissioner James O'Neill. And posthumously, Alvarez was awarded a key to the city by Mayor de Blasio earlier this week as well. We are watching some of the family as they say their final goodbyes and pay their respects for Detective Alvarez. He died Saturday at the age of 53 after a three-year-long battle with cancer. It was linked to the exposures that he received at Ground Zero after the 9-11 attacks. The husband and father became the face of the September 11th health crisis as he went before Congress fighting to make the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund permanent. And again, this is a live look from Immaculate Conception Church in Astoria.
out here. We are taking a live look as mourners are gathering outside of the Immaculate Conception Church in Astoria, Queens, as the hearse has just entered the church for the NYPD detective Lou Alvarez and his funeral. Family and friends are gathering there to, to pay their final respects, first responders also lining the streets. You may remember that Alvarez made national headlines just three weeks ago before his death when he testified before Congress urging them to indefinitely fund the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. One of his three sons spoke yesterday. His name is David. And he said, before my father became a hero across this country, he was always mine. He was always the man that I looked up to. He inspired me. He taught me to be the man that I am today, to always stand my ground and to always keep my head up high. I will remember my father the way that I will, but I also appreciate the memory that the rest of the country now has for him as well. If you are just joining us here on CBSN New York, we want to first welcome you as we pay our final respects for 9-11 first responder and victim rights advocate Lou Alvarez. He is a retired NYPD detective that spent months digging through the rubble during the rescue and recovery efforts at Ground Zero. He died from 9-11 related cancer illnesses just three weeks ago. 
he mustered up enough strength to go to Washington, D.C., where he rallied and testified before Congress, urging them to indefinitely fund the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. We heard from his family yesterday. He has a wife and three sons. His brother also spoke and said that tomorrow, meaning today, we bury our brother. After that, we think about the message he left for all of us. His son saying that this is a very difficult time having lost my father, but you'd be happy to know he was at peace and I was at peace knowing that he was happy with everything he accomplished. And the family urges everyone to please just continue to spread his message that these 9-11 victims and first responders deserve the very best. Let us pray. O oh God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give we pray to your servant Lewis, for whom we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, he may come before your face through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Would you kindly be seated? May I invite Kelsey Alvarez forward to proclaim the first reading.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God will destroy death forever. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I may invite Olivia Lugo to proclaim the second reading. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. What is seen is transitory, what is unseen is eternal. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. 
Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but, is, but to what is unseen, for what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Thank you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep in, on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visit me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you, a stranger, and welcome you, or naked, and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison, and visit you? And the king will say, to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. The Gospel of the Lord.
dear Lainey, the compassion and the expressions of our condolences to you, our brother's beloved wife, to his sons, David, Tyler, Benjamin, his mother and father, Deacon and Mrs. Alvarez, Arlene, his mother-in-law, Mr. Porter, your family, his brothers, Felipe, Fernando, his sisters, his sister, Aidita, your spouses, family, and friends, the expression of our condolences of all of us who are here, family, friends, parishioners, dignitaries, at the passing, the death of our brother, Luis Gustavo Alvarez. When I tried to sit down, I couldn't get away from the video of Louis's statement before the subcommittee in Congress. Not because of what he said, which was so piercing, but because it gave me an opportunity to look at him and listen to him. Everything he said was said for the benefit of other people. He made a plea that he had been many places and seen many things, but he would have been no other place than on Ground Zero or the Pentagon or Shanksville. As he said, as we stood up, we, we stood up before the world and said that terrorism would not have its day. And then he said we were many colors and races and politics that didn't have their day as we moved as one to the terror that was before us. Louis was born in 1965 in Cuba. And part of understanding Louis was that his parents made the very deep decision that they would not raise their sons under a communist regime. And so they, with thousands of other people, brought their children and their families and each adult with their 38 pounds of clothing to this country. The land of the free, the home of the brave. We have known many times of the dangers in this world and how brothers and sisters have been called to the defense of the people, service for the common good, all those phrases that we look to define ourselves. Louis was a quiet boy. Didn't say too much. He grew up here in this parish. He was educated here. Like so many others, he went on to McClancy High School. But then on graduation from McClancy, almost like a shot into the Marines. And we noticed something of a change. We noticed that he, Louis sort of had his own drum that he walked to. He wasn't angry or rebellious. But sometimes you hear, uh-huh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And then he'd find his own path. Later, we learned to say about people who've come to maturity, they, they found the way to define themselves. They weren't defined by somebody else, no matter how much close they were and how much they loved them. So he walked to his own beat. But we noticed with the Marines, and most specifically with the police department of the city of New York, that he found himself. He found his mission. 
He found the others, whether we call them the guys or the fellow officers or the gang or the squad. It was very important to him. And more than important, it was part of the way he saw the world and the way he carried himself. In so many of the interviews after his talk at Congress, he was available to further interviews while he was in the hospice in his last days. And one of the interviewers asked him, the attention you've been given lately must be overwhelming. And he said, yeah. He says, I've sort of been a humble, ordinary guy, usually flew under the radar. Didn't draw too much attention to himself. I asked Brian, what did you make of him, his partner? He said he was a man of integrity. He was brave. And he had a lot of respect for people and his fellow officers. He saw himself as one with many others and never referred exclusively to himself as I. He said to his, one of the interviewers, about his legacy. And he hoped he left the legacy to his sons. And I listened to the words myself. Be a good man. Finish what you start. Don't quit. And never quit on yourself. And the last one was, your word is your bond. In a moment in Sloan Kettering, in a free conversation, he said to me, I can't figure out my mission. So I asked some of the officers, do you use that word a lot, the mission? I said, maybe that's the Marines. And that word kept popping up and popping up and popping up. Why am I here? What am I for? Louis was three years ill, three years in the house. He had a lot of time to think and reflect. In that sanctuary of his own heart, made in the image and likeness of God, And it always came back to the we. So to pass the time, he started making, burnishing these little signs on wood with an electric pen. And some of the officers asked for them. His parents got faith, hope, and charity. Another guy got sympathy Dalis. Always faithful. He had one even in Latin. Fidelis ad mortem. Faithful to death. And I said to myself, you better be careful, Father, not to make any, to make more of Louis in death than he was in life, but in life he was something. In the last hours of his life, and I ask Ides permission to just share this with you. 
He was comfortable, but he was groaning. And Heidi said to her beloved brother, what's wrong, Louis? He said, I'm tired and I'm walking. And she said, where are you, Louis? He said, I'm on the pile. The gospel we proclaimed, our Lord says to us at the end, when we're all gathered before him, And I, in my own life, may think of all the questions I think he's going to ask me, and he tells me what he's going to ask me. I was hungry, and you gave me food. Thirsty, and you gave me drink. You may have been undercover for years, exposed to dangerous, missions, operations, to get a break on evil and the destruction of human life. You may have gone to the bomb squad. It's not one without the other. And whatever you did, for the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it for me. We are asked in faith, dear brothers and sisters, to do something very simple. It's something that no man can force or expect or oblige you to fulfill as a social obligation or good manners. You saw him give testimony. You got a sense of his person. You may have captured a sense of his dedication to the core, the body, of the Marines, of the police department, sustained by his loving wife and children and family all through the years. This little guy who was a big guy. It's the word of thanks. For all the good that has been received through our brother Lewis. It is the word of gratitude for the person of Lewis. As we still on the journey of our lives come to that respect, to the dignity of each person This in the faith is the way we join ourselves to Christ and would speak to the Holy of Holies, our Father. Gratitude is important because the saints tell us it is only the grateful that have the eyes to see in the life of the Spirit. Louis, asked me and the family that we remember at this Mass everyone who died on 9-11. The civilians, the police, the firefighters, the medical workers, the construction workers. And he asked that we remember four officers that recently died. We, the core, 
We in the church also talk of the core, the body. That white covering is a reminder of celebration of his baptism in Cuba. His godparents are here, his parents are here. They and a few others were there at the start of the journey. Now we are here. A lot more people. I don't know how many officers are standing outside in respect. But the power of that we and the mission and the work to be accomplished in so many ways uneasing and dangerous. We've got to be grateful to be a man, a good man. We will pray in one of the songs that we'll sing in Spanish. The way we pray, unless the grain of wheat fall into the earth and die, it remains alone, just a grain of wheat. But if it die, it bears much fruit. And so we celebrate this Mass of the Resurrection for our brother Lewis. We want to express, as the family expresses, its gratitude. Louis came alive as a Marine and as a police officer with all of the others. We say thanks to all of those who are standing outside. have come from different parts and different states. So I'll leave you with the last words of Louis to me. I got the little piece of wood, bark, and he burned sometime during those three years of suffering, the words, at the end, the only thing that matters is how much we loved. That's in our families, in our service, which is another word for love, in our respect, in so many ways that maybe you know better than I. To be grateful. So we pray. When we sing later on the national anthem, not as a exclusively political statement, but the thanks of this family from Cuba and so many others who found a home and a mission and a work and a legacy of which we're all proud. God bless and strengthen Laney and the family. And I am remembered by a rabbi to say to our Jewish brothers and sisters, may remembering him be always a blessing. May he rest in peace. Amen. Thank you.
you kindly stand? And I may invite Michael and Haiti forward to proclaim the prayer of the faithful. Strengthened and guided by God's word of life, let us now bring to our Father the needs and the petitions that are those of his people today. We are gathered here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Luis. Strengthen our hopes so they may, that we may live in expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our brother Luis was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who lost their lives on 9-11. We pray for all first responders, the police, firefighters, paramedics, and also all of those who later died and are dying from their exposure to carcinogens and their families who mourn them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Our family and friends of Luis Alvarez seek comfort and consolation, heal our pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pause a moment now and just bring to our Father the, the petition or the need, the wish or the expression of goodwill that fills our hearts, which is the matter of our worship of God. Heavenly Father, you alone are compassionate and good. Hear these are the petitions and prayers which we bring to you in the name of him who for love's sake suffered, died, and rose from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly be seated. May the children who are going to bring up the gifts follow the cross. Danielle, Dylan, the young porter boy, right? Nieces and nephews of Louis.
lifted up your Lord God of all creation. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Bless Heavenly Father, these gifts we present to you in the name of him who for love's sake suffered, died, and rose from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an earthly and eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven, and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Amen. 
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the working and power of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Father, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Louis, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for un unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Nicholas, our bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Luis Gustavo, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body 
after the pattern of his own glorious body, to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. And with him and in him. Amen. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, oh. all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us all preach on the Messiah of peace. Peace, Steve. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace, Bill. Peace peace, 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 peace. Thank you, Tom. Third, Tony, thank you for being. Peace, Father. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you shed my divine word. When only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Christ. Body of Christ. Those uh, Catholics who are prepared to receive Holy Communion, the body of the Lord, may do so at this time.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that your servant, Luis Alvarez, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you kindly be seated? And if I could now invite the police commissioner of the city of New York, James O'Neill, to come forward. Good morning, everyone. Father Har Harrington, thank you for the homily, thank you for that eulogy. And to the Alvarez family, just want to ask your indulgence for a second, uh, a preface before I start speaking about Louis. I look around the church, I look outside, I see elected officials, I see government representatives, I see members of the community, I see a sea of blue, I see firefighters, and it's great. It's great that we're all here to celebrate Louis's life. But I just want, for a second, and every time there's a funeral, I think I have that opportunity, everybody just to think about who Louis was, what he was a part of, what he dedicated his life to. 
And Louis came on in 1990. Think about what this city was like in 1990. Think about where we were. Think about the fact that there was little hope that things would get better. But Louis was part of a transformation. The city's been transformed, not by accident. A lot of hard work, dedication, courage, love, caring. That's how this city was transformed, by the 36,000 cops, the 18,000 support staff, and the thousands, the hundreds of thousands that have come before us. That's how this city was changed. And where we are now in 2019, we all need to appreciate it. The way the city's going to get even safer is by us all working together. It's okay to criticize, it's okay to scrutinize, that makes us better. No doubt of that. But just think about how we got to where we are today. And be thankful. Be appreciative. And nobody that took this job to become a cop thought they were going to be rich. Not by any stretch of the imagination. They took these jobs because they want to make a difference. They want to do good. They do it each and every day. Father Harrington and the staff and congregation of Immaculate Conception Church, Laney, Deacon, and Mrs. Alvarez, David, Tyler, Ben, Fernando, Phil, Ida, and to all the nieces, nephews, and other family members, co-workers, friends, and loved ones who are gathered inside and outside this beautiful church today. On behalf of the entire New York City Police Department, I extend our most profound condolences. Detective First Grade Luis Alvarez was an authentic man. He let you know exactly what he thought. I think that's pretty fair to say. And while his tenacity and strength made him a leader among his contemporaries, he would shy away and downplay the accolades that naturally came with such actions and influence. At the end of the day, and all throughout his remarkable life, Lou just wanted to do what's right. And he desperately wanted others, particularly those in positions of great power, to follow suit. Born in Havana, Cuba in 1965, he was just a year and a half old. And the Alvarez family came to plant roots here in Astoria. Lou attended this church, was a deacon at this Tower of Faith. He graduated from Monsignor McClancy Memorial High School in East Elmhurst and served heroically as a United States Marine. And then four days shy of his 25th birthday in 1990, Lou Alvarez became a New York City cop. He was initially assigned to the 108 Precinct, not too far from here in Long Island City. Three years in, he made another brave, courageous decision. He transferred to our Narcotics Division, where as a talented undercover, he earned an investigator's gold shield, followed five years later by second grade detective, and two years after that, first grade. And for those of you who are not in the NYPD, that's a tremendous accomplishment. <laughs> By 2004, though, Lou was in search of a less stressful and perhaps less dangerous assignment. So without a hint of irony, which I still can't believe this, he joined the NYPD's elite bomb squad. <laughs> Talk about an exceptional human being. A highly decorated cop living life on his own terms, Lou retired 20 years and one day after he started. If his story had ended there, it would have been enough for several lifetimes. He really was the perfect depiction of the American dream, a shining example of our city's great diversity, as well as the extraordinary call to service that so many courageous New Yorkers embrace, even if only for just part of their lives. But for Lou Alvarez, he was far from done. Lou believed strongly in the equality of all people, especially in political, social, or economic life. And as the world clearly saw recently, he actively, and with trademark stubbornness, promoted that belief until his dying day. For the last three years, Lou fought cancer in a truly incredible and ultimately very public manner. I refer to his battle as incredible because it wasn't just Lou's valiant struggle against a debilitating illness, cruelly revealed after, years after his unwavering dedication to public service. It was also his enduring commitment to the people of New York City and our nation, including every single first responder and volunteer who saw their work on September 11th and in the weeks and months afterward as a duty, plain and simple. He and they viewed their efforts as an obligation that they viewed that they'd promised long ago to the people we serve. And all Lou wanted in return was to have his government recognize the labor and pain of his brothers and sisters by making sure they're taken care of medically when they fall ill. And Lou himself 
told the House Judiciary Committee in Washington three weeks ago. He was covered. But there, aren't a, there are a great many others who aren't or who won't be. My life isn't worth more than the next responder to get cancer, he testified. My family's needs are not worth less than others that have already died. Lou emphasized with blunt grace that future families stand not only to experience the stress of fighting these terrible illnesses, but that their struggles will be compounded by the unconscionable financial burden of trying to fund their health care. The NYPD alone lost 23 brave souls on that day the terrorists attacked our nation. And more than 500 of our members have since contracted various ailments and life-threatening illnesses. And as of this morning, 222 of them have already died, including Lou Alvarez. And tomorrow, that number could rise. And in the years ahead, it most assuredly will. No person who responded to 9-11 or who worked to the point of exhaustion during the lengthy rescue and recovery period that followed should ever need to beg our elected officials to act. But I'll tell you this, we can thank God it was Lou Alvarez who stepped forward to make that demand on behalf of every citizen and resident of our country. And so, with the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund running out of money and set to expire next year, and Congress considering, considering a possible vote sometime this summer, the time for action is long overdue. It is in Lou's memory that we must strenuous, strenuously urge all our representatives to recognize that the United States of America cannot in good conscience place a financial cap or a temporal limit on this slow-moving crisis. They absolutely must vote to extend and to shore up adequate funding for the VCF indefinitely. Because as Lou, a paragon of resolve, flatly insisted, it's the right thing to do. This is all really very simple. These heroes responded to calls for help. They did not hesitate. That's who they were and still are. They are the very best among us. So I'd ask everyone to take a moment to appreciate that these people, your neighbors, put themselves in harm way, harm's way to keep you safe and understand that they will always do everything in their power to protect you. That's what Lou and so many others did. That's his enduring legacy, and that legacy protects us still. We pray that Lou now finds rest and that we find solace and peace and strength to live the lives he fought to give us all. God bless Detective Lewis Alvarez, and God bless every member of the NYPD and all first responders who will forever now carry on his most important work. Thank you. If I could now invite forward I.D. Lugo and David Alvarez. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For those of you who don't know me, Louis Alvarez was my older brother. He was third in line in the Alvarez family, and I was blessed to be the fourth, the only girl. My name is Ida Lugo. Louis was born in Havana, Cuba, communist Cuba, in October 1965. But before long, he and my two older brothers would receive the greatest gift they've ever received from our parents, freedom. They painfully left behind everyone and everything in the hopes of providing their sons with the opportunity to live and worship without censorship, to live in freedom in the United States of America a country my father taught us from very early on to love and defend. Little did my parents know that this single act of sacrifice would lay the groundwork for the man their son would become, a man who served, defended, protected till his last dying day. 
From early on, my brother's instinct to protect led him. I was often told the story of how when anyone approached me, Louis would firmly grip the handle of my stroller, take on a soldier's stance and warn, don't touch my baby. He was three and a half. As a teenager, my brother enjoyed a typical life of fun with buddies, sports, first crushes, and first jobs. It was soon after, however, that he began to distinguish himself as someone who marched to the beat of his own drum. After turning 18, my brother came home one day to announce to my parents, without warning, that he had just signed up for the U.S. Marine Corps. Off he went, still wet behind the ears, to serve and defend. The Marine Corps was a good match, a place where honor, courage, and commitment were held in high regard, a place where he knew he could build a better self. His highest call to order was received when Louis became a father for the first time, not without a little fear, and to the best of his ability, Louis raised his son, David. Anyone who knows my nephew will know what an amazing job he and David's mom says he did. They raised a son who recognizes the importance of family bond. Louis went on to meet and marry his wife, Lainey, someone who my brother lovingly recognized as a girl who also marched to the beat of her own drum. Together, they proudly welcomed Tyler and Benjamin, sons my brother tried hard to teach the meaning of loyalty, respect, and honor to. It was during this time that my brother would answer his calling to become a member of the New York City Police Department. What he didn't know was, it was he was about to discover the largest group of people who followed the same beat, his same cadence a family who worked towards the same level of excellence in serving and protecting. His career started with uniform patrol at his beloved 108th Precinct in Long Island City. He proudly moved on to Queens Major Case Narcotics, bravely taking on undercover work, and then finally onto the bomb squad, where in his own words, he joined an elite and special breed. It was during his time in narcotics that our nation faced the tragedy of 9-11. While, so, while most sat stunned and in disbelief, our city's finest, our city's bravest, our brother Louis responded without hesitation. He would recount my desperate phone call to him, begging him not to go down there, to stay away, but go he did and there he would be for the following three months. Jumping ahead almost 16 years, Louis and our family were served the biggest cross God had ever laid on us, Louis's cancer diagnosis. And with constant reminders from my incredibly strong mother, we faced each day in the faith that God never sends a cross too heavy to bear. Louis took on that cross in a way so few do, with a tenacity and resilience that even surprised his oncology team. Nevertheless, chemo became his prison, his jail, often isolating him from the world, too sick to engage in the joys of everyday life. And despite a get out of jail free card often being waved in his face, a whole pass to get out of chemo, he firmly declined it each and every time. Did he do that for the glory and attention? Absolutely not. He was way too humble. He did it to battle against his biggest fear, the fear of leaving three sons fatherless. Little did he know, God was at work even amidst his deadly diagnosis. He arms Louis with the grace to begin telling his story, a simple blog on Facebook, this is what he liked to call. Posts he wrote to urge his coworkers and other responders to become registered with the World Trade Center Victims Compensation Fund. 
to safeguard themselves and their families should they be hit with the same diagnosis. Treatment after treatment, my brother updated his friends and shared his experiences with chemo. A fly under the radar type guy, as we know, he always appeared shocked to see the number of people following him and listening to what he had to say. Into his life, God would send angels to inspire Louis to fight the injustices being played out against his fellow first responders. Jeannie Kelly, Matthew McCauley, John Feel, and John Stewart, as well as others, armed my brother with the vehicle used to plea on behalf of those who were not being treated fairly. That's what he was taught. That's what he knew. That's what he always did. And as we all know, despite being in pretty bad shape, he traveled to Capitol Hill to have his voice heard. He wanted to urge our government to do the right thing in protecting its own. It became my, bro my brother's dying wish, the legacy he wanted to leave, that the bill protecting the victim's compensation fund be passed. Humble that he was, he had hoped to have some small piece in that. And although that did not happen as quickly as he would have liked, Louis was very grateful to hear about the unanimous vote to pass the bill onto the Senate. As one of my brother's beloved previous partners shared with me, Louis was the quietest man I have ever worked with, but in the end, he made the most noise. Before closing, I'd like to share a very personal experience that took place the night before Louis' death. I woke up to my brother attempting to get out of bed. He was coughing, he was agitated. He told me he had been walking and walking and walking. He wanted to sit in the chair. I called for the nurse who assisted in settling him down. I recounted what he had said. The nurse asked him where, where he had been walking, and with David as my witness, my brother responded, I was walking to find first responders to make sure they get help. How we walk with the broken speaks louder than how we sit with the greatest. To my dear Iris, our family's 1044, our suspicious package, I pray that the angels led you in, just as I know you will be there to lead me in, just as you promised. Luis Gustavo Alvarez, end of watch, June 29th, 2019. Fidelis ad mortem, faithful unto death. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being here today to honor and celebrate my father. Thank you to all my family, friends who may as well be my family, and my family in blue, who like my father, serve this city and country with humility and bravery. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is David Luis Alvarez. I was given my father's name as a second name because when I was born, he told my mother he wanted me to be my own man. He didn't want me to be a junior. He called me Buddy and Bubba. He called me Dave. He called me brother, and he called me friend. In his last few weeks, he called me his bulldog and his angel. But I always felt the most pride in his voice when he called me son. My firstborn son, he would say. He was fortunate to have two more sons after me, Tyler and Ben.
And I know without a doubt, we three have always been, until the very end, his greatest joy and source of pride. My father also took a lot of pride in his work. He was a proud veteran of the US Marine Corps, and he was an especially proud NYPD detective and bomb technician. The job was important to him. It was a calling. You'd think he was just in it for the rush, but he took pride in helping others. He just had a particularly exciting way of going about it. Once, when I was a kid, he came to visit me one Saturday afternoon, and I insisted he help me paint my room and rearrange the furniture. I was maybe only eight or nine at the time. I sat on top of my dresser, maybe five feet off the ground, and leapt off. I asked him, wasn't that brave, Dad? Without skipping a beat, without even looking my way, he said, Dave, there's a thin line between bravery and stupidity. <laughs> what was that? Those words have stuck with me all of my life. I think about it at the strangest of times and so often when thinking about all the good he did on the job. He always worked on the brave side of the line. He would say it takes a special breed to be an NYPD bomb technician. It takes a special kind of person to do the work he and so many of you here do on a daily basis, and I thank you for it. He understood that to be a public servant meant to be in service of the greater good for all. Should I be fortunate enough to join the NYPD in the near future, I hope to be as admirable and effective an officer as he was. My father and I didn't always see eye to eye, like any father and son pairing would. But I loved him like nothing else, and I know he loved me just the same. Growing up, I'd be told by family members that I was just like my dad. I laugh like him, I smile like him, I walk like him, I'm quiet and stubborn like he was. I always took it as compliments hearing these things from people because I always looked up to my dad always wanted to be like him in any way I could. But before he became an American hero, he was mine. He was my hero, my inspiration, the one above all I wanted to make proud, the one I aspired to be. He got his first wish for me, though. I learned to be my own man. I learned from his mistakes, but I also learned to be brave like him, to care and be strong for others, and to serve others as he did. I learned to love the Yankees as he did, and if they can pull off winning the World Series this year, I'll know he had a heavenly hand in making that happen. I learned so much from my father. I learned that being a man can mean many things, but above all, it means taking responsibility for your words and your actions. Your word is your bond. In his last few days, I made several promises to him that I, made, that I have every intention of keeping. In his last moments before taking his last breath, I told him I love him. I love you, Dad. I promise to keep walking on the brave side of the line. I promise to be the man you inspired me to be. Thank you. And now if I could invite the most Reverend Paul Sanchez, Auxiliary Bishop of Brooklyn and Queens. <clears throat> I come bearing the prayers and consolation of Bishop DiMarzio, the Bishop of Brooklyn and Queens. He stands with you, he prays for you, and he gives you gratitude for your wonderful courage for all the members of Luis Gustavo's family, the courage and support that you gave him in his wonderful life, and especially in his suffering towards the end. Thanks to all who have spoken and reminded us of the great values that we cherish as Americans, as Christians, as Catholics, and those values that were captured in the life of this young man, values like courage and fortitude, selflessness, self-sacrifice, living for others, we give thanks to God that we have a witness of this before us. And we see the same values and virtues in the members of our New York City Police Department, 
who daily help us and keep us safe. And we give thanks to God for their fortitude as well. We come as a people of faith. We look forward to that day when we will see Luis Gustavo again and enjoy his friendship. Luis, may the Archangel Michael welcome you with the angels into the peace of God's kingdom. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you have eternal rest. Amen. Amen. Antes de separarnos, despidámonos de nuestro hermano con que nuestro adiós, último adiós exprese nuestro afecto por él, mitigue nuestra tristeza y fortalezca nuestra esperanza. Un día lo saludaremos de nuevo con alegría cuando el amor de Cristo, amor que lo conquista todo, aniquile hasta la misma muerte. A tus manos, Padre de bondad, encomendamos el alma de nuestro hermano con la firme esperanza de que resucitará el último día con todos los que han muerto en Cristo. Te damos gracias por todos los dones con que tú lo enriqueciste a lo largo de su vida. En ellos reconocemos un signo de amor y la comunión de los santos. Acoge las oraciones que te presentamos por este hermano nuestro que acaba de dejarnos y ábrele las puertas de tu mansión a sus familiares y amigos y a todos nosotros que hemos quedado en este mundo. Concédenos saber consolarnos con palabras de fe hasta que también nos llegue el momento de volver a reunirnos con él. Junto a ti, en el gozo de tu reino, 
por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Dale, Señor. Te pedimos, Señor, por tu siervo Luis, que ha muerto ya para este mundo y ahora vive para ti. Que tu amor misericordioso borre los pecados que cometió a causa de la fragilidad humana por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Unidos en oración, acompañemos a nuestro hermano al lugar de su sepultura.
Yes, I can. Thank you for joining us live to pay final respects to NYPD Detective First Grade Luis Alvarez. We just watched as his widow and three sons were presented with the flag of the New York City Police Department, which was on Alvarez's casket just moments ago. Hundreds, as you can see, are now at the Immaculate Conception Church in Astoria, Queens for his funeral. After the 9-11 attacks, Alvarez, a former U.S. Marine and retired NYPD bomb squad technician, spent months helping with the recovery efforts at Ground Zero. 
In 2016, he was diagnosed with colorectal cancer, becoming one of more than 50,000 people whose illness has been linked to exposure to toxins released after the Twin Towers collapsed. He leaves behind, as we saw there, his wife, Lainey, and three sons, David, Tyler, and Benjamin. Many across the country grew to recognize Alvarez following his pleas to Congress just three weeks ago as he sat beside Jon Stewart, who was at the funeral today as well, fighting for indefinite funding for the September 11th Victims' Compensation Fund. You can see Alvarez's mother being escorted there, his sister as well. He was born in Havana, Cuba. Alvarez then moved to our area as a young boy. During the eulogy, his longtime priest said, Louis, as he called him, grew up in this parish. He was a quiet boy, then joined the Marines, where he found a way to define himself. He had a mission, a purpose, and a brotherhood. It's evident that that brotherhood has come out in full force again today. Alvarez was just 53 years old. He was remembered fondly by his son, his sister, and police commissioner James O'Neill, who called Alvarez a man of integrity, bravery, an officer who helped transform the city into what it is today, and a man who lived by the adage, we heard this several times, that your word is your bond.
We want to thank you for joining us live to pay final respects to NYPD Detective First Grade Luis Alvarez. Hundreds, as you can see, were gathered at the Immaculate Conception Church in Astoria, Queens, and lining the streets for his funeral. Bagpipers there playing the theme song for the Marines, the United States Marines. After the 9-11 attacks, Alvarez, a former U.S. Marine and retired NYPD bomb squad technician, spent months with the recovery efforts at Ground Zero. Saturday, he died from the cancer he contracted while helping on that day. We heard from his longtime priest uh, during the funeral, and he said that before Luis Alvarez passed, he weighed in on his own funeral, and he asked that everyone who died on September 11th or who had perished from illnesses contracted during that time be remembered, and they were. Luis Alvarez himself asked that we be left with this final thought. At the end, the only thing that matters is how much we loved. Our hearts go out to him, his family, and his friends, and we will have more coverage remembering the life and service of Detective Alvarez here on CBSN New York. We'll be right back.